Hi, in this segment, we're going to go over the basics of the game of chicken. So, like all games, we have a stylization. And, and chicken occurs when you have two players, they're belligerents, they're going to do something stupid with cars. Basically, they're going to drive their cars, or if it's the movie Footloose, tractors towards one, one another, and the first one to swerve loses. And if the other one doesn't swerve, they win. Brilliant! So we have two strategies in this. Swerve, which is sometimes referred to, a lot of people like to use the cooperate defect labels for the strategies. Not going to do that here. I'm going to keep it to what we're doing. But swerving is considered to be more cooperative. Going straight, defecting, although it's not really, it's more belligerent. But we have basically two strategies. Swerve, blink. Sometimes we talk about blinking first. Swerving, going straight. So, obviously, if you're driving two cars at one another, uh, we, you know, we got the, uh, this is going to lead to four different outcomes, right? If, and looking at these things, if player one and player two swerve, right, looking at our, our thing, swerve, swerve is the first upper left hand corner. And so they both swerve and they're both chagrined or, you know, eh. uh, if on the other hand, player one swerves, but player two goes straight, then player two is thought to win in that instance, right? And so player two wins. If we move to the next row, we if player one goes straight and player two swerves, player one wins. And if they both go straight, they are both dead or they get hurt or something bad happens. So the bad, something really bad happens if they both go straight. So now what are the preferences over this, right? And we can, uh, you know, we want to look at, and always with games, we look at the outcomes and we ask, what are the player's preferences? Now, in a generic game like this, we are making some assumptions about them and it's coming from the stylization. And we're going to look at each of these outcomes and assign a number, higher numbers being more preferred outcomes. So with player one, we'll start at the top and say, what would player one's most preferred outcome be? Right. Well, player one would prefer the outcome in which player one went straight and player two swerved because, well, player one wins. Right. That's the player one wins outcome. So we give that a four. Uh, swerve, swerve, both chagrined, but, eh, you know, no one won. And so we can call that a three. Swerve, go straight. Well, in that instance, the uh, player one has lost the game right? And player two has won. However, the worst outcome, presumably, usually the assumption in this game, is that being dead, right? Both of them crashing is because they, you know, no one wins and you're dead, right? So that's the preference ordering here. Now for player two, we could do it a different way. We'll start from the bottom and say, what's the worst outcome? Well, yeah, go straight, go straight, both dead. That's the worst. The next worst outcome is, remember the Player one strategy is first in the label, right? So go straight is player one goes straight, player two swerves, so player one wins. Next best one, swerve, swerve, right? We give that a three. Both chagrin, but, you know, no one's won. And then the best outcome for player two, player one swerves, and player two goes straight and wins. The approbation of very questionable onlookers. So... There are our numbers that we can put in and put the game into normal form. And here's the game in normal form. I've just put those numbers in. Remember, the first number is the payoff. Now, these numbers are now the payoffs, right? So the first number is the payoff from that outcome for player one. The second number is for player two, all right? That's the way it always works. Row goes first. So I use player one and two because it makes it easy. But always the row player is the one that goes first. So. If we look at this, we want to solve for the Nash equilibrium through iteration. And so we just randomly start somewhere and say, okay, suppose player one swerves. What would player two's best response be, right? So player one, by picking swerve, has restricted player two's choices to the first row, the top row. And to figure out which is better, uh, you look at the numbers, right? If we want to use these numbers, we just say, okay, player two looking at the second number in the ordered pair in each of those columns, 
those top cells in that, that row, in, in that row that player one has picked, well, we got if we swerve, get a three. If player two goes straight, gets a four. Four is bigger than three. So, bam, that's the best response, the net, right? Now, the question is, Nash equilibrium. When looking for it, we have to ask, all right, if player two does that, flip the script, if player two does that, would player one picking swerve be a best response in the first place? Well, if player two picks go straight, now we're left with the column on the far right, go, the go straight column there. And so player one's choice between swerve and go straight is a choice between two, because we're reading the first number here, between a two or if it goes straight, gets a one. Two is bigger than one. So yes, swerve, the, that choice stands as the best response. And we have thus discovered a Nash equilibrium. But wait, we're not done through iteration. We never did start a go straight, right? So let's start it go straight and see what happens. So player one picks go straight. What's the best response? Well, now player two's bottom row. You restrict attention to bottom row, second number. You got a two if you get if you, if player two get swerves gets a two. Player two goes straight gets a one. Well, you know, player two would rather swerve, right? So there is player two's best response. And if player two does that, flip the script. Look at that column, swerve straight down under the arrow. Look at the first numbers. We've got a three, got a four, right? Three if it's swer if player one swerves, four if player one goes straight, four is bigger than three. So yes, that first choice would in fact stand is the best response. They're both best responses to each other's choice. So that's the second Nash equilibria. There we go. <laughs> that's what we that's what we did. We've now got two Nash equilibria, and that is the point of the game at some level. This game has multiple equilibria, right? It's a situation where if one player decides to go straight, the other one's best response is to swerve and vice versa. And so the question is, we have two, you know, but, but you know, vice versa, if that, if the, the one, the other player decides to, to go straight, then the other player swerves, right? So it's an indeterminate outcome. We have two equilibria here we aren't sure which we we predict one of them will occur not sure which one and this is also represents what we would call a, com a commitment problem if one player can commit if a player could commit to go straight then the other player's best response would be to swerve right but they both have this thing and so we call it a commitment problem because if you could commit you could win However, that's true for both players, right? And it's non-cooperative game theory. You can't commit. That's the whole point. There are no such things as commitments in this. You can't. Uh, and so when we get outside of the game, when we get outside of the theory and talk about, you know, how do you win uh, a game of chicken, right? Well, you commit. You know, you, you do something that makes it impossible for you to swerve, right? Uh, of course, if both of you do that, you're going to crash into each other. So that's why the commitment issue is is off the table for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons to go with non-cooperative game theory. But once you pick non-cooperative game theory, commitment is, in fact, off the table. It is important to note also, unlike a prisoner's dilemma, there are no outcomes that are Pareto superior to the Nash equilibria. Right In the prisoner's dilemma, we had a Nash equilibrium was defect defect, but there was a Pareto superior outcome. The cooperate cooperate outcome was Pareto superior. And so you that's what made it a dilemma. If only we could get to that. Here, the Nash equilibria, there's no outcome that is better for both players than one of the Nash equilibria, right? If, if you're in either Nash equilibria, then in either one of the equilibrium, I not it screws you up with this. Uh, but if you're in that situation, you know, there's no outcome better because one player's winning, basically. One player is getting that player's most preferred outcome. So the point is that uh, 
when you talk about repeated play, repeated play can get a different outcome if you know can move to a better outcome than the one shot Nash equilibria or equilibrium, depending on which what you're talking about. And this is not the case here, right? So uh, this is the problem with a game of chicken. It's indeterminate, you know, and it, it uh, depends on commitment, which supposedly you can't make, right? So this is the nature of chicken. This is the, the the problem. There are ways to solve it when we talk about deterrence and escalation. Uh, Robert Powell has come, you know, up with ways to solve a kind of a repeated chicken game, but it's not as straightforward as it is with Prisoner's Dilemma. So that's the game of chicken.